Good morning. We're extra chatty this morning. Good to see you this morning. Special welcome to any guests and visitors that are joining us today. So glad you can join us and welcome to those who are watching us online. If you need a bulletin for today's service, go to trinitywhitesville.com. And after you look at that bulletin, you can scroll down and let you get an offering for today's service. A couple of uh, quick announcements uh, for you. A reminder for any of our youth between uh, third and sixth grade who have not been instructed for Holy Communion next Sunday. We have our first communion class after Sunday school at 10.30. Parents, you are encouraged to be there with your children. Please make sure you bring a Bible. And if you are interested in first communion but cannot make that class, we will have a makeup class on the 29th. Just let me know. Speaking of the 29th, we have our Winter Family Fest. 2 to 4 p.m. for all ages. We're going to have sled rides uh, out and around the property. We're going to have games and food and other activities. So we invite you to join us from 2 to 4 on the 29th. A reminder that our annual meeting is on Sunday, February 5th, and the uh, annual report should be out next uh, Sunday, so you can get that then. Also, your giving statements for 2022 were mailed to your house. Uh, if you have any questions on the giving statements, Please make sure that you contact Becky and I use um, for that. Also, former pastor Bill Wentz passed away this week. Uh, his funeral will be Tuesday at King of Kings Lutheran Church in Woodbury, Minnesota at 11 a.m. with a visitation beginning at 10 a.m. We ask that you keep his wife Marilyn and her family in your prayers at Bill's passing. I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements to you and invite you to please, oh, before we do that, I've got to do one other thing. Plus, you know, Tammy just got in here and she's just sitting down, and I was going to feel bad if I was make her stand up. So we'll do this now. Today is Shirley Bloom's birthday. So we're going to sing happy birthday. Are you, are you denying it, Shirley? No? Now, let's see, you're what, 35 today? 35 today. All right, let's sing happy birthday to Shirley this morning. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear Shirley. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Shirley. Shirley, I want you to know that none of your children told me anything, but I can't say the same for your sons in laws Okay? All right? I invite you at this time to please turn to page 95 in the front part of your hymnal and please stand for our brief order of confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please note we'll be on the right side of page 95. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, I Love to Tell the Story, number 661 in your red hymnal, 661.
the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to turn to the front page of your bulletin for our prayer of the day. Let us pray together. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you and joyfully find you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from the 49th chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you people from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. When I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a plowed arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel may be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, the poor of other nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 40, which can be found in the front part of the Red Hymnal, after page 338 and before the hymns. We're going to read Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11 by half verse, which means you will read the indented portion of each verse. Again, Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11. I waited patiently upon the Lord. The Lord lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the miry clay. The Lord put a new song out of my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not turn their hands or their souls to God of lives. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God, and your plans for us none can be compared with you. Sacrifice and offer you do not desire. You shall have the mighty grace for earth offerings and honor. And so I said, Here I am, I come. I love to do your will, O oh my God. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I have not hidden your righteousness in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your steadfast love. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. May your steadfast love and your truth continually stay safe. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, Together with all those who in every place call the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. 
just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our reading comes from the first chapter of the gospel of John, beginning with the 29th verse. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself had seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. As he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated and anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and the children may come forward for the children's son. Is to show and tell. 
is to show people the love of God in Jesus and tell them about what Jesus has done for us. Because Jesus has died for us and forgiven us of our sin. Jesus reminds us every day that we're loved and that we're important. And so we can play, show, and tell with Jesus. We can show people who Jesus is by loving them and being kind to them. And we can tell them what Jesus has done. So they, that they would follow Jesus just like we do. So I hope that you'll tell people about Jesus and let them know what Jesus has done for you. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we give thanks for Jesus and for the opportunity we have to show and tell what Jesus has done for us. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us and be with us in all things and remind us that no matter what, you love us through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, it's two pieces of candy, one for you, one to share with someone else, and a high five. Thanks for coming up. This is definitely so good. I am all right. Reminds me that 
they're enriched in the word of the Lord, that they've been made saints in Jesus Christ, that they have promises before them, that they lack for nothing because God is with them. Here, Paul is trying to remind the Corinthians and us that though there are disappointments in life, we actually have so many blessings in the midst of those disappointments. That life, so often we spend so much of our time in life seeing what we don't have and looking at what we lack and we miss what we have. We miss the blessings that are in front of us, the joys of life, like birthdays and anniversaries, like the joy of our children when they laugh, like the opportunity to see friends, like a sunny day, and when it's above freezing, most importantly, we have a Savior in Jesus Christ who gives us the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting through his death and resurrection. We've been blessed and enriched in the world with a purpose and a place, with a God who loves us for who we are and offers us forgiveness when we disappoint him. We have a God who says that we are welcome. The God that gives us gifts to use in the world for the sake of our family and friends, community, and our God. And why do we have all this? The key is at the very end of the reading, where it says, God is faithful. God is faithful. When I read that, it reminds me that despite of the disappointments in my own life, not only in myself, but in the world around me, that I have a God who is always there, who remembers God's promises to me. God is faithful, will not let me fall, will give me strength when I'm weak, forgiveness when I sin, and new life above all. This faithful God loves you no matter what and never forgets the promises that God made to you in baptism. That even when you disappoint, God still remains faithful. God never gives up on you and is always there for you every single day. Life is full of disappointments. We can spend all of our life only focusing on what we lack and the disappointments we see in other people and in ourselves. Or we can remember that God is faithful and that we are blessed and that we have joys beyond compare, and that no matter what, we have a God in Jesus Christ that walks with us, that brings us to eternal life, and gives us hope and strength every day. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to please stand and turn to 302 in the red hymnal. 302.
faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Good and loving God, thank you for being faithful to your promises to us. Because you are faithful, help us to be bold in faith and to remember that we lack for nothing, but you bless us with everything. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. loving God, we're sorry for those times in which we disappoint you, when we don't follow the path you have laid out for us to make decisions that hurt others. We thank you for your forgiveness and mercy in Jesus Christ, and remind us that we have that promise of forgiveness always. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Amen. Loving God, we ask that you would care for and heal those who hurt in any way this day. Give them the strength in the midst of their suffering. And remind them they're not alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, be with those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Remind them that your son Jesus Christ has defeated sin and death. That they have a place prepared in heaven for them. Come with them in the midst of their grief. And walk with them every day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for our partners in ministry, the ELCA in the Northwest Senate of Wisconsin, the Churches of Boyceville, Luther Park Bible Camp, Lutheran Campus Ministry at South, Stepping Stones in West Cap, American Lutheran Home, and Lutheran Social Services. We give thanks for our partners in ministry. And we ask that you would bless them in their work as you would bless us as your church, as we work to proclaim the gospel and serve the neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we ask that you walk with us every day. In the midst of our everyday lives, whether we're at home, at school, at work, out in the community, be with us to strengthen us, that we might show and tell, that we might proclaim the gospel and show others the love of God in Jesus Christ in our words and our deeds. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share God's peace with each other, and then we'll have a conference.
first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now, the table is set, and our Lord Jesus Christ invites you to come forward and receive the gifts of God, for you the people of God, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ poured out for you, grape cheese in the center of the tray, gluten-free bread and dough by the crust. If you commune at your church as a visitor with us today, you are welcome to commune with us as well. Uh, please follow the instructions of the ushers. You may be seated.
I will say, Natalie, you've never disappointed me, though. Were you paying attention to my sermon, so you know what that's about? No. Set you up for that, right there. Ask your brother, he was going on a sermon. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, here we go. Our number is 243 2699. 243 2699. Right over there. Surely, Hetzel. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for supporting our mission trip youth. We conclude our worship service with Go My Children, hymn number 543. 543.